government regulation is a hot topic, especially when sensitive personal information is requested, then filed away in a centralised system the public have no access to. Regulation often overcomplicates life, and many people are now looking for easier ways to transact quickly without bureaucracy. Take, for example, one of Australia's largest industries. So to know what a quantum leap forward Bitcoin is for the gambling industry, you have to consider what it's like gambling with government currency at the moment. This is in Australia, which is a gambling friendly, well regulated in, uh, jurisdiction. Uh, it will take at least 15 minutes to sign up and deposit with your credit card. Your credit card can then be charged at any time in the future. All the information you've given them, such as your email address and your postal address, that could be uh, stolen or sold at any time in the future. Then when you want to make a withdrawal, you will have to verify your ID by sending in a copy of your credit card, sending in the front and back of a government issued ID and sending in a utility bill. And then you'll have to wait two days for the withdrawal to come. Now, if you used Bitcoin, you can do all of that in less than two minutes. Less time than it takes me to explain how long it takes to do it with government currency. And you'll also be able to bet anonymously. You might value your privacy from people you live with. You might be worried about tax implications. You might be worried about legal implications. So Bitcoin uh, can get around all of those problems. Gambling is just another thing that, that it makes easier. But it's a very popular thing which is very difficult in, with government currency. There's a big question about the regulation of cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin. The whole point of cryptocurrencies is that they are designed to work transparently without third-party intervention, government included. Bitcoin is unprecedented, as there is nothing in our history which compares. It's an intriguing topic and a great social experiment which is attracting some of the smartest minds in the world from all walks of life. I mean, Bitcoin is all about people, right? You know, this distributed, this huge wave of distributed sort of, you know, man, something's got to change and, you know, let's, let's, let's do it. But that's what we want to harness. You present people with such a no-brainer that they run out of reasons to say no. And I think if we can achieve that sort of groundswell of support by providing people with the tools that they need to make that difference, then that would be huge. There's a lot of unbanked people in the world, people who don't have access to the world economy. They're pretty much shut out of a bank account. And because Bitcoin is as cheap and easy as sending an email, it's going to make a lot of difference to a lot of impoverished people who are unbanked or underbanked. And as long as people create value for it, which they will, it, it, you just can't kill it. You, it's, it's in too many places, it's everywhere. One thing about Bitcoin is that the rate of growth is most certainly faster than the internet was. Uh, people always say, so what should we expect? You know, how long is it going to take to get mainstream adoption? I say, how long do you think it's going to take for the internet to have mainstream adoption? It was in fact only seven years ago there were no smartphones because they hadn't been invented. So that required everyone to get a new phone, for pieces of hardware to be developed, to be distributed, to be sold in shops. Bitcoin doesn't require any of those things to grow into a um, commonly used thing. It's more like Twitter adoption or something like that. It just requires someone to poke their screen a little bit and, oh wow, now I've got a Bitcoin address. Well, I guess I can start accepting Bitcoin. Anyone want to sell some to me? Yeah, sure, I'll do that right now. Bam. Cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin bring absolute transparency to the table. The concept is starting to gain respect from skeptics and it's encouraging conversation about alternatives to our current archaic financial system. The study of nature shows that change is a constant, it's an evolution, and an integral part of our survival as a species. Our ideas are a reflection of this. We can either protect our ideas by locking them away, or we can set them free and test them against a changing world. This realisation is clearly apparent in the world of software where we have two models, proprietary and open source. 
A key way to find out which world you're in is to listen to the language of your environment. How much profit did we make this quarter? How can we make more? Hmm, we'll have to consult our legal department. Hey, quick, copyright that idea. How can we cut costs? So how can we make them buy more? What else can we sell them? With open source, people break technology to explore what else is possible, to make technology work faster and more efficiently, generally bypassing middlemen and making technology more compatible. The results are slowly making businesses pay attention. Think Android, which is now the most popular smartphone in the world. Language around open source projects could sound something like, If we share the foundations of this project, will it help other people in the future? Let's open up this project so others can contribute. If I wanted to send a dollar to Africa direct to that person, how could I do that? In the case of digital currency, people got together and asked, how can we create a digital money for everyone? As a result of this question, we now have Bitcoin. Bitcoin will, will solve some problems, but it won't solve every problem and it's not going to be solving democracy for us. It's quite a controversial thing to say, but I think Silk Road was probably one of the better things to happen for Bitcoin. From a legal perspective, um, a lot of the people in the legal industry I've been speaking to are fascinated because it's so rare that the law has to deal with issues like this. We live very much in a, in a society where there's a lot of controls put on us what you can and can't do or what you should and shouldn't do. Uh, Bitcoin sort of challenges that, that idea. I've hugged it as well. When it's not working, I'm often thinking, yeah, I, 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 give it hugs, yeah. I give it hugs all the time. I'm like, hey buddy, how you doing? If you're a Bitcoin innovator and you feel like you've got something to contribute or you'd like to collaborate, or if you're interested in sponsoring us, let's talk. Until then, see you round like a Dogecoin. <laughs>